So what's the next NX1? That's coming right up. Welcome to Run Playback. This week we're checking out the Nex NX1, a ride that's stirring up some real interest in the e-bike community. We'll break down its features, weigh in on the pros and cons, and do a test ride. So let's get to it. The NX1 brings a unique concept to the table, an interchangeable drivetrain. You've got two options, the NX1S with a BLDC in-wheel hub motor and the NX1R with a QS mid-drive motor. Both versions use the same sine wave controller, a clever touch for compatibility across both models. The hub motor option boasts 3000 watts nominal and 12,000 watts of peak power, while the mid-drive motor steps it up to 5000 watts nominal and 12,000 watts of peak power. The hub motor version delivers 196 newton meters of peak torque and the mid-drive motor amps it up to a robust 360.5 newton meters, perfect for off-road and stunt riders. Now let's discuss the tech. AI-assisted battery and motor management is in the works, which sounds like a game changer. Plus, cloud connectivity and a custom app for tracking ride activity sounds appealing for the tech savvy. The 6061 aluminum frame and swing arm maintains durability without excessive weight. The removable 72-volt battery comes in either 28 amp-hour or 50 amp-hour options, giving you some flexibility based on your needs. This is the NX1 bike. This is in the R configuration with the mid-drive motor. It's got a 5,000 watt nominal, 12,000 watt mid-drive. Got 19 inch front and rear wheels with an optional 1821 dirt tire kit. It'll have 220 front and rear discs, hydraulic brakes, four piston. Uh, it'll come with a 54 tooth sprocket stock. And you also have the option of running either pegs or pedals with an easy swap, two bolts, throw the, uh, the bottom bracket in there, throw your cranks and your pedals on, and you're good to go. Kind of keeps it in that legal gray area. And then over here, we got the NX1S in the hub drive uh, configuration. This is more geared towards the street. You got the bigger rear motor on here. This is a 3000 watt nominal and 12,000 watt peak with the current configuration. Having the weight kind of centered or even lower than most bikes out there gives you a little bit better ride feeling and handling in the turns. We also have a longer wheelbase for the speed. These will go over 55 plus miles per hour. So um, if you've ridden a shorter wheelbase bike, you get a lot of wobble. Removable batteries. This is the 50 amp hour. You can choose a 50 amp hour or a 28 amp hour. Fully comes out, both sides open up here so you can get in there nice and easy. You got the handles. We were initially gonna launch back in the beginning of the year, uh, but there was a lot of things we wanted to improve on. Um, the technology, we're working on AI assisted battery and motor management to give you a little bit more efficient battery life to get rid of some of that range anxiety and also uh, for safety. So seeing if there's any cell degradation in any certain banks, but these batteries will be able to push 200 plus amps each. The controller we're using right now is uh, same form factor. So you'll be able to run up to a 96 volt uh, configuration on this bike. We're gonna sell the cases separately so you can have your favorite battery manufacturer like Chai or powerful lithium kind of build you your own pack. So some people really like mid drive, some people really like hub drives. They each have their pros and cons. Um, so we're gonna have different powertrain kits to where you can swap out your mid drive for your hub drive. Say you're gonna be driving street for the majority of the time and you want that stealthy ride with limited maintenance, uh, no chain interface, then you can run the, mid, the hub drive. If you want to hit the off-road, some trails, have a little bit more torque for the uphill ride, you can uh, swap it for the mid-drive. Instead of having to spend another three to 4,000 or even $6,000 for a bike, you can spend $1,000 on the upgrade, upgrade power kit and swap it in to your liking. All right, first ride with the Nex NX1S. Now, as you can see, uh, it is, you know, a bigger bike. I'm on the shorter end, but this should be fine for anyone over five foot seven ish. But I can, I could still do one of these. Kind of hop on one leg. We'll set it on power level one, and we'll just kind of go right into it. And yeah, I mean, super quiet. That's what I love about hub motors. It's just like really, really quiet, very stealthy. And the handling and the turning, 
uh, immediately feels very easy to control. We'll bump it up to level three and you definitely feel the power kick in. Hydraulic brakes doing its thing. Yeah, I don't, how do I describe this? I mean, I'm feeling elements of obviously the Suron, but uh, it's a different geometry, I guess. And I feel like it's, it's just more of a substantial bike. It's a bigger bike, a bigger frame. Yeah, I mean, this thing rips. I'm just like in this little parking lot right here, but uh, level three, tons of torque right off the line. And uh, wow, and it's super silent and it feels almost like, a, feels like OEM. Like it feels like the production model, to be honest. I can't get over how light this feels. Uh, it is 6061 aluminum and so you're getting the benefits of like a frame that's easy to maneuver and easy to just kind of like throw around. This little area is not doing it justice, but just for testing it in this little parking lot, it's like feels like a lot of fun, <laughs> like 100%. So uh, let's move on to the next model, the mid-drive model, and see how that one feels. So we are planning on having a VIN, uh, an MCO provided to you uh, so that you will be able to get them registered as a moped. Uh, you have to check your local state laws, but here in California, it's, it's, it's generally pretty easy to do. We're aiming for 5,500 for the 28 amp hour and 6,500 for the 50 amp hour uh, currently. But like I said, we're still tweaking and developing some new parts, um, sourcing from different vendors and seeing what's out there to, to get the best quality, most durable, affordable bike for you. First ride with the Nex NX1R. This is the mid-drive model. So this is gonna be, I'm assuming, a little bit closer to how I ride the Suron. Let's get right into it. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. So the, the controller tune, obviously I like the ramp up on power level one. You know, it's not gonna throw you over. I feel like this is the right settings for the weight of this bike. And again, easy to, easy to turn, right? Doesn't feel like too heavy in the front. I like where I'm sitting actually, just like I'm sort of like closer to the, where the gas tank would be. And let's bump it up to power level two, see how that feels. Again, very smooth throttle, very smooth tune. And obviously three. Ooh, the three, three gives you how many kilowatts is three? So right now, uh, power level three is set to eight kilowatts. So this is very much like, like the Suron. <laughs> uh, it'll throw you off if you're not ready for it. But uh, yeah, I mean, tons of power. Again, being in this little, uh, this little parking area is not doing it justice, but uh, you know, super easy to, to maneuver around tight spaces, easy to corner. Yeah, this is, this feels really good. I like this, I like this model a lot. So it's like a fusion of a moped and a Suron. But really dope. Yeah, it'd be really cool to have an app connected to this thing and like actually see some of the parameters and even changing the power levels and stuff like that. That would be really cool. The mid-drive model weighs in at 140 pounds with the 28 amp hour battery and the hub drive is around 160 pounds with the 50 amp hour battery. Keep in mind that weight definitely plays a big role in its handling. You can also choose your parts like pedals or pegs, a street or dirt tire kit, and an optional fender kit. These options underscore the NX1's commitment to personalization. Now let's talk about what we like. The modular design is a standout feature. Owning two plug and play motors instead of two different bikes could be a cost-effective solution for many. 
It also feels like a mashup of the best features from an Onyx RCR and a Suron, which are two of the most popular e-bikes available. And despite its size, the NX1 handles more nimbly than expected thanks to its weight distribution and controller tune. While not exactly cons, there are some points to think about. The concept of interchangeable drivetrains is innovative, but might not appeal to everyone, especially those who prefer that everything on a bike is designed to serve a specific, single motor setup. Also, the AI and cloud connectivity features are extremely promising, but untested in real-world conditions. Once that gets sorted out, I think Next will have a very unique advantage in the market for high-powered electric bikes. Overall, the Next NX1 is definitely looking to push boundaries in the e-bike world. Its modular design sets it apart because it combines versatility and performance. While it may not be the perfect fit for every rider, its innovative approach is definitely worth the hype. So what's your take on the Next NX1? Is it a leap forward in e-bike technology or a niche product for a really specific type of rider? Share your thoughts and let us know what you think in the comments. As always, if you want to dive into more EV tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.